I'm like, okay, cool. I've got everything in order. And then Zoom is like, oh, eh. You know, you, you really don't, though. <laughs> you, you, you thought you did. You but... thought you did. You thought you did. <laughs> this is not how this works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you could not be confident about your technology. We, we, we require you to be, yeah, exactly. uh, to be uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Calvin Thomas music. I, 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 again, I appreciate you coming on. Um, it, with with this this technology thing, it, what, what's the most sort of frustrating thing um, with streaming that you're that you're facing right now? I mean, especially as a Twitch partner, as someone who's you know you're doing great. Um, congratulations, by the way, Twitch Thanks, partner. Man. I know it's Thanks. been a couple months, but it's but still. Um, I it's 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 cool. Honestly, um. I was pushing I was pushing for partner but it wasn't anything super intense like mm -hmm. it was just kind of like I'm going to go ahead and apply and if I don't make it the first time then I'm like okay cool we'll try again another time and kind of let the numbers change a little bit see where that goes and then uh you know they reached out to me and they're like we we've seen the way your channel has been um you know, progressing and everything and we wanted to see if you wanted to be part of the program and I was like okay yeah wow. Yeah, it's that's awesome. uh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. why not, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. When you uh, w was there ever a time in your like Twitch streaming career where you were like really trying to like push for the numbers and really trying to like, you know, because I I see that happen a lot with people and even me and a lot with new streamers too, where they're just like, I need constant growth. I need this, this, this. Have you ever? Did you ever have those moments? in your streaming career on Twitch, or has it always just been sort of like, eh, we'll grow if it grows, it won't if it won't, and just laid back sort of approach? Yeah, that's pretty much the way I was looking at it, because in my weird way of thinking, I would be like, if I push for like, uh, you know, more subs or, you know, more follows or something along those lines, then I feel like I won't get it because I'm trying to push for that, yeah. trying to push for that kind of thing, that intangible thing that I uh, am, am really, really reaching for. And so I'm just like, okay, I'll, you know, when we get there, we get there. Yeah. And then we end up getting there and I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, let's see what else we can do. Yeah. Um, but I know for me, for me at least, I don't know if it's the same for everybody else, but I know for me, like if I, if I try to reach for something like that, like set up a, a, a goal like that, um, or I need to just, like like if you're thinking about Instagram or Twitter and you're trying to get enough followers to build up your your social media clout, you know, um, th that hasn't really been my thing. I'm just kind of like, we'll just see where it all goes. And when it, you know, becomes what it becomes, then great. Uh, but, uh, but but yeah, I haven't really pushed like that. Also, I don't really like the I don't really like the promotion and marketing stuff too much when it comes to my music i just like to make the music and and play around with it and stuff but like when i have to share it out on social media and stuff like that i'm like okay yeah maybe i'll i'll do what i can here but if i don't have to then <laughs> no, no no i i, I understand <laughs> that because there, it like there's something about it when it when you, you're making the music and you're you know like you're getting the album art and it's Oh, oh, thank you so much, Bethany Wear Music. I appreciate you being here and for Bethany, the follow. Bethany, awesome. Um, there's this thing that happens when you start turning music into into a business that, for me at least, is like it just all of a sudden it, it just something in my head just turns off and it's just so unappealing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. and and then when you have to go out and push it on the people and you know they're like you know getting your friends DMs and like you know <laughs> all this stuff. It, it, to me. <laughs> Oh, Bethany is a musician too. Welcome, Bethany. Um, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna follow you just because Raina, you should. Raina is Beth giving. Oh my! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know I'm for real, Bethany. Now you know I'm for real. Hey. Now you know I'm for real. <laughs> I follow Ladies you, Ladies and gentlemen. I was I was Bethany for a split second. <laughs> How you doing? He's back. He's back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We we. Uh, you, but but there's something about it that that takes the almost takes the joy out of like all the music part, like the musicing, like making the music is the best part, and then there's yeah. the, 
And then you have to do the business side, which is draining. And, and you know, again, trying to be in your friend's DMs, trying to, like, push it on the people. It's just there's something about it that feels just not right. I don't yeah. know. what What is it about it that you don't like? I think one of the things that, you know, I could honestly do without is the like if that if there were a way for me to just make one post saying, hey, I released an album check it out or i release a single check it out but with social media people move from one thing to the next so instantly mm. and so you have to reach out to them as many times as you can as many or at least the idea is as many times as you can as many platforms as you can and so you'll be posting it over and over and over and over again and for me i i feel like that it's like like it can be spam mm. to a certain extent yeah. and uh that's one thing that I really don't like about it. Also, um, you know, when it comes to, um, I guess, when it comes to making stuff that, you know, people would like to listen to versus what you want to make. And um, if that's going to um, have as much as, uh, of an impact on you as it is on the, the people who might be listening to it. And uh, that constant battle between should I include certain things that people would like um on this project or should i just focus on the stuff that i like and see how they respond to it and it's just that that kind of battle because that's also um a, a situation between um music as a hobby and music as a business you know i guess the music as a hobby would be the more personal stuff you'd like to experiment with but music as a business would be more like um what's the kind of people would listen to that you know would lead to people buying your album or your single or streaming it on Spotify or and stuff like that. You know, like what, what are those things that they like? Kind of like if you're listening to like Zed or um, the song um, from Zara, is it Zara Nilsson um, symphony? Mm, and there's sure. a particular, there's a particular, <laughs> there's a particular chord progression that is used in EDM and, and uh, other similar genres mm. where it's like that one progression can sell a single or an album right. it's the it's the da, 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 that kind of yeah 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 that, that, kind of that attacky like melody and it's like do 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 you know just like exactly really yeah. simple so, two to four chord progressions and 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 really attacky do 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 yeah yeah, it, I, I mean, that's that's pretty, it's pretty much that's pretty much it. <laughs> and so that one element is allowing the um, you know, the listener to say, okay, I want to hear more of this. I want to buy more of their stuff. And uh, if they have stuff they've experimented on, cool, great. But this is what I'm here for yeah. compared to somebody who's like, I'll listen to whatever you make, <laughs> and I'll 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 buy whatever you make, right? Uh, or stream whatever you make. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of constant battle thing that I've been thinking about recently and uh i don't like the part where i have to slowly transition over to mostly music as a business where mm -hmm. i'm like thinking about what kind of stuff would they like instead of considering like a good balance between what i like and that makes it um you know <laughs> yeah no for sure well yeah, i mean so. because once you start sort of deviating away from who you are to try to appease other people it just becomes disingenuous and it becomes the four chord EDM song, right? Like, yeah. And it just becomes something that's not really truly you because you're trying to think outside of who you are to make other people like you. Uh, and, 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 you know, and, and it's not a, like that's the thing it's not a bad thing to do because they do it all the time the music industry does it all the time you know they have these boxed bands that they just put slap together and put some money behind them and send yeah. them out on the road and and you know like they're they're basically the property of the studios and it, it's 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 like 40 writers per song and and and, and they're like what what can we do to make this the most current sounding thing that's going to get people to give us money for this 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 wave file you know so it's like yeah. how are we gonna get how are we gonna mine money out of these people with these different frequencies that we can sort of smash together that everyone's heard a thousand times in different kinds of tropes and, and, and you know and, and gouge that money out of people any way possible so it there is this grossness about trying to sort of appease uh an audience 
But if you're if you're coming from a place, which I feel like that's where you come from, and I know you're thinking about trying to sort of, what can I do to sort of expand? It, you know, like I I really like your like it's not I don't want to call you wholesome, but I really like that uh, that positive side of things, and like your music has a really upbeat, and I you do talk about you know some sad things sometimes, but you know like you have a sound that's very Calvin, and and, and like to just sort of expand on that, I think is. It's probably going to bring more people to you since you already have people who like you anyway. So the fact that, you know, I, and that's just you, you know, and that, that's just we're just talking about Kelvin here. But, you know, how people, you know, people always trying to fit in in some way or another. And yeah. and and I, I it's, I'm always that guy who's like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about fitting in. It doesn't matter as long as you can express yourself in the purest form. Like it doesn't matter, and people will find it, and people will be attracted to it if it is really coming from a, a really pure place that you're not trying to do something, but you are just doing it. If that makes yeah. sense. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and that just kind of took me back to when I was like going to middle school and stuff like that, and in high school. Like, I mean, because you know, when when you're you're there, you want to. You, you'd want to, you know, fit in with certain groups and, you know, meet new people and things. Right. But there were moments where I did try to fit in and uh, like I kind of had to, it, I guess for me, it wasn't genuine. I didn't really realize that until I had gotten to like college and stuff yeah. when uh, I was like, you know, let me just see if I can do my own thing real quick. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's what college is do, for, right? That. Yeah, because yeah. high school and, uh, is, is a, yeah, go ahead, please. Oh no, I was I was just gonna say like it, it took a little bit for me to kind of s- step outside of that comfort zone of being a part of something already established, yeah. you know, um, and then just kind of constructing what I what I wanted to be. Now, granted, I am surrounded by I was surrounded by three other brothers who were raised with the same morals and and values, um, and so I wasn't too far off to where I was a rebel kid, mm-hmm. like a problem child, you know. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, there were things that I um, I wanted to do that were outside of the kind of the person that I was. Like and, what? Uh, I guess like I was there were moments where I was kind of like mostly to myself, mm-hmm. like I would I would study here and there. And then, you know, if I had uh, access to. Uh, the studio for my music classes i would just go there and play music (laughs) but it it would be just me Mm -hmm. and then other times i would be in these groups that would do that were like a part of um you know they would they would hang out and talk about stuff that i may not be too familiar with but i was just there because i just wanted to be a part of the group (laughs) and you know you know and uh and um that was stuff that was i mean it was fun for a time because i was hanging out with them it was cool Mm -hmm. But uh, eventually I was like, you know, I there are a lot of variables that I have no control over, you know, or at least can contribute to changing. You know what I mean? So, like, what am I what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, yeah. Yeah. But but, you so. know, but it's I think it's a natural thing for people want to fit in and stuff, you know, like that. I mean, if you think about it, it's like thinking about it on this. Uh, I, I, I really like how this idea of you know, uh, how, how there are people looking at who we are as humans now, uh, going off of what we were, you know what I mean? So like the idea of being a part of a tribe and if you couldn't be a part of a tribe, you were ostracized and made to go live out for on your own, you know, like it, it, in certain aspects. So I really, it, these, these feelings of wanting to be a part of something are deeply embedded into us genetically and into, you know, like we'll fight against our better, you know, uh, we'll fight against our better notions just to sort of be accepted into a group. I mean, that's how like gangs, you know, function, you know, like yeah. there's, yeah. you know, he's like, even if he's like, you got to go cut somebody to be in this game. It's like, oh, well, I don't really want to cut somebody, but I do want to be accepted. So I'll go yeah. cut somebody so I can be accepted. And, you know, that's a that's an example of a very negative 
way of wanting to fit in, but it is something that is deeply ingrained in us to want to be a part of a, a bigger group. And of course, like when you think about it in those terms, like being in a tribe in a bigger group equals protection away from uh, animals, from other groups, from, you know, and, and you think about it in today's terms is like being a part of a gang is protection and, and there's camaraderie and, and there's, and there's, you know, like, the sharing moments with people and sharing feelings with people you know like it's it's a very natural thing for us to want to do yeah. and to fight against that is uh it's hard sometimes especially when you just want to be cool or something <laughs> you know exactly exactly yeah and then there's the fact of like in that going off of that tribe analogy like when it comes to being someone strong or maybe somebody cool mm -hmm. somebody that's appealing that could be different depending on the people that are in the in the tribe. So yeah. you might feel like you have to appeal to other people's types of, of what they define as cool or right. strong or entertaining. And it's like if you do that, then you're you're just going to burn yourself out mm -hmm. because you're going to try to appeal to everybody's varying versions of what they think are cool or strong. Yeah. You know, it's like I I'm only one dude. I, I <laughs> can't make everybody happy i'm only one dude what, 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 do you, what do you want from me what do you want from me yeah what do you want from me so um yeah it's definitely gotten much easier for me to um accept that there are things that i like doing that um you know that i i feel happy with and um and one of those major things actually showed up later on um it was when i was working at a music store i, I was working there for about two and a half years um, but I'm not a fan of retail because um, I also worked at a grocery store prior to that. Um, and um, I, uh, when I had the, the everything in place to become like a full time musician, mm -hmm. I took it. Yeah. And my manager knew it was time because <laughs> I just like like he had, he had seen me kind of slowly work up to it, talk about it a lot and things of that nature. And so uh, I finally told him about it and he's like, OK. Go for it, man. Go yeah. for it. You do your thing. That's uh, great. And uh, it's been about, uh, I think it's been about almost three years since then. Wow. It's been three yeah. years. So then when you left your job at the music store, which, you know, it's some people would be like, oh, you work at the music store. That's sweet. You must just slay guitar all day and <laughs> hang out with musicians and just just rock out. And it's like. Well, no, there's like quotas and you got to like go sell things and you got to like push things on people and you got to like, Ooh. there's a lot of sales that I cannot stand. And, and, and I know how those work. I, I got a buddy who's really high up in, in Guitar Center and uh, he is not afraid to sell an overpriced guitar to someone just starting just to get that, that, that money, you know? Yeah. And there's these unscrupulous things, the unscrupulous salesmen who will just take advantage of a situation, which, I mean, in, in some ways you can't blame them. They're just trying to eat. And then in some ways you're, they're a piece of crap because I've been taken by one of those people in my lifetime. So, <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't when you don't see it on the surface when you're when you're the customer, because, mm -hmm. you know, you're you're thinking, oh, man, they're getting this sick guitar for me they're getting this amazing guitar for me yeah. dude i'm coming back to get more of their help i'm yeah. coming back yeah and then you find out that somebody else got it at the cheaper <laughs> price and you're oh, like yeah. no i did not just <laughs> fall for that i did not just fall for yeah. that and that was one of the main things that i was thinking about like when i started working there i was like am i gonna have to be a salesman more than a musician mm. and there were cases where I had to be like, I had to sell stuff to people and um, I had to basically recommend them things that they would need. Now, granted, it wasn't like super expensive guitars or, you know, um, hundreds and hundreds of dollars of accessories. Mm. But if it did get to a point where it was hundreds of dollars of accessories, these, was, these would all be things that you need. Like mm -hmm. you cannot have an electric guitar without a cable <laughs> and, uh, if you have a guitar strap, then that just makes things easier. It's a little comfier, you know, have guitar picks because you're not going to start off playing with your fingers. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, also, you know, what size works best for you because they come in different sizes. Uh, acoustic guitars come in different sizes and styles. So you just have to figure all that stuff out. And it took me forever to get to that point where I was saying, this is a guitar that you should have because mm -hmm. it fits your body size. It fits your music 
style. Um, and also you're a beginner. So you, you don't need a $900 Eastman. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's something that I kind of had to slowly, slowly grow into because like I wasn't a salesman, you know, I was a musician. I, it took me forever to do that. And, and you know, my pe the people that I was working with, they, they saw it. They were like, dude, you got to sell some stuff, man. You get, you got to get from behind the, the counter and sell stuff to yeah. people. And uh, yeah, it was just, you know, I, 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 I started to grow into that slowly, mm. but, um, but yeah, I, I have seen some people who were just kind of like, let me get you this expensive instrument uh you're a beginner cool that's fine uh we got a five thousand dollar saxophone here yeah so let me go ahead and give this to you have you ever played before uh, that's okay. let me just go ahead and get it no this thing anyway. plays itself basically just take it yeah. home with you have but um, the store was also good about recommending like music lessons mm -hmm. too so that that was that was something that came in handy but yeah but yeah i i, I have seen it done before and it's like come on guys when you're when you're dealing with the public are you one to are, are you um an outgoing guy or are you an extrovert kind of guy or are you more of an introvert so was that hard for you to like talk to people at first or were you all about it just trying to learn your craft um i think starting off i um was more i guess procedural in the idea of playing a gig mm -hmm. uh, i would just kind of go through my songs yeah. and you know i would chat here and there but it was mostly play my music and then, you know, pack up and go <laughs> get um, out of there really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> but I was playing gigs with my, my dad for a while. Cause my dad was, uh, my dad was playing music at the time and he was, um, he was in a couple of bands when I was a kid and, and he would play all over like Miami and, and Fort Lauderdale and, oh, and all, and all those places. And, um, when he, when we moved up to, to Maryland, he didn't have as many gigs and he had to switch gears and go it oh, wow. um, but he still helped me with my music stuff and he would help me find gigs and things we would play weddings and anniversary parties and i slowly grew into somebody that could chat with people more yeah more so than playing music and so um when i started busking that's when it started to really 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 develop mm. uh, because you know you'll have people that'll come up and they'll ask questions about your music or they'll you know maybe want to talk to you more about opportunities and things or Maybe they'll just, you know, just walk by and say, hey, how you doing? And I'm just like, hey, you know, um, but uh, it's it. I would say that it was really fine tuned with busking, um, but then maybe also live streaming, too. Yeah. You know, well, busking and live streaming, I feel like are very closely related, although there's not that live aspect, but you are just sort of you're playing for tips for people sort of casually coming through. Uh, I mean, I guess the biggest difference is, is that after you get a following and if you get get a get a community together, then you sort of just it's sort of like you start seeing the same names come back. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm sorry. I interrupted you just to say that dumb thing. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess that was that might have been where I was ending, honestly, because I <laughs> like I, I think um, I, I had a chance to really fine tune yeah. my chatting with people um, when I started busking a lot because, mm -hmm. you know, I had to play music. I had to um make sure my stuff was in order like if i had merch or cds out or whatever um uh, and then people would come by and they'd want to chat so i'd have to flip from playing music or checking my merch or making sure everything's in order to chatting with the person yeah. and getting what i wanted to say out there clearly and then switch back to playing music again and so it just got more and more fine-tuned as i did it mm. and uh yeah, I mean, it, either that or playing a lot of weddings and anniversary parties. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, just yeah. performing, you know, regu regularly. It's hard. Hey, to say. <laughs> just <laughs> just doing that, just doing that in general. It, it's just it, it, the more you do it, it's like anything else. It's like it's like learning an instrument or you know learning how to cook. It's just you practice it, and the more that you're in front of people, the more comfortable you get. And then, unfortunately, you get people like me who are so comfortable in front of a crowd that he'll go like this. Oh, jeez. In, in a room full of people on stage. Like, that's 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 how comfortable I've gotten. I've done that, and I'm just like, like, after I did it, where, I, and then I look out to a crowd of people who are just, like, staring at you, and you're just like, all right, I, know, I got to. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, you could you could be helping them. I mean, because here's the thing, like, you know how like when you're like uh, when you're like scratching your nose or whatever, or you're like, like trying to see if there's any like like 
whatever in your eye yeah. you know you people end up checking that stuff too so it's like oh yeah. shoot maybe maybe i got something on my face <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe i, I got some, like <laughs> yeah maybe i've got like some like eyeball sand or whatever <laughs> and so it's like let me let me check that real quick and then uh there and then but they have to make it look like you're the one who's like being weird <laughs> yeah for some odd reason but they're checking their stuff too it's it's a weird Thing. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody wants to look like the weirdo, right? Like everybody mm. wants to be part of the tribe and look, you know, they're not trying to stand out and, and be noticed like that. It's like it, any kind of <laughs> differentiation, they, any, any any kind of uh, out of place uh, behavior could could end in uh, being expelled out of the group. So of course we gotta we gotta maintain our coolness at all times. So we're exactly. not so we're not banished. Exactly, <laughs> can't be banished. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you're, um, you know, like I, 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 I heard you tell a story about your busking days in DC. Um, we're yeah. going to get to these, we're going to get to these questions, by the way, Chet, we're going to get to these questions. And if you do have a question for Calvin, please use the channel points. <laughs> They're very cheap. It's just one fresh bar to get to a question for the guests. So I, I, I see them, uh, and I haven't been ignoring them and we will get to them. Um, we're just, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, but I heard you tell this DC busking story, uh, uh about a brownie and a homeless yeah. gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I um, cause, cause I mean the, the guy, okay. So the guy, okay. So I was, I, I, when I was busking, I was busking, I normally busk in a farmer's market, so I don't have to busk on the side of the street or anything. Mm -hmm. It's already in an established area yeah. and also it's allowed. Um, so, <laughs> and also I can, it's legal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's allowed. It's, yeah. it's legal. That's, that's something that the market preps for. Yeah. And so I, I was playing, um, in DC, I was playing near a Metro station. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, you would have the, the vendors from, from my eyesight. It was the vendors that were a little bit below me cause I was on a hill playing and, um, there was uh, there was a homeless guy who came from one of the entrances and he's been a part of the market a couple of times because you know the, the vendors would kind of have him like slowly make his way from the entrance <clears throat> to the exit um <laughs> uh, but they would also do that you know very subtly right and so uh there was one day he came by and he picked up a brownie off of the vendor's table and he came over to me and he's like here you go <laughs> He's like, here you go. I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, thanks. I don't know where this came from. Did it come from somewhere over here? Thanks. <laughs> it's like it was. I'm like, thanks. Um, and uh, and he's like, are you gonna eat it? I'm like, well, I'm I'm playing a gig. I'm playing music right now. But, uh, I'll just set it over here for a little bit. I'll set it over here. And then uh, he left. And then he came back. And he was like, did you eat the brownie yet? I'm like, dude, didn't you just give it to me? <laughs> she just gave it to me a second ago um and i'm, I'm also and also i'm also playing music so no <laughs> um, so and then he left and and he was going to come back around and do it again but then the vendors saw and they were like hey uh let's let's go do this or that or whatever they said <laughs> redirect what was they said um because he was going to ask me again yeah and i was i was just like dude i'm i'm busy <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm busy i can't do that right now right. and and also i think another thing that was i guess a kind of a turnoff really was like he'd opened the, <laughs> the brownie wrapper and and uh like thank you but please don't <laughs> i got it i got it you know i can yeah. do it myself at, at, at the appropriate time i can open yeah. my own brownies thank yeah. you very much yeah i'm like i'm not sure you know where you've been but right. like i i please don't Yo, that's the thing that I don't miss about the real life gigs is the is the people just coming up to you and 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 just bothering you. And I know that they're just trying to be nice. And I know that you know, like this homeless guy was just trying to be nice, and he probably liked what you were doing. And in yeah. in his world, this was his way of being nice, you know. So it's like I get it. it's coming from a cool place. It's coming from a nice place, but it's like also. Um, when when I'm playing in the middle of someone play, like it's so rude to just come up to them, especially in the middle of a song. Like, hey, do you know? Do you know Wonderwall? Do you know <laughs> Wonderwall? And they'll like get louder, you know. And if you're at a bar, you know they'll like get louder, or they're already talking loud, or too close. They're talking too close. You Wonderwall? <laughs> you know? That's a good... do, do you know? <laughs> okay. 
Bag up, please, sir. You, like, you're take a step too... back a minute. Just hold on a second. Hold on. It's like, and, and then, and then, Lord help you if you're a woman out there. Mm -hmm. Amelia Ray Music. Hey. Thank you so much for that sub. I appreciate that, and this is for you, Amelia Ray, I, for for your uh, for your wonderful sub. If I can find it, I will find it. Um, oh, hello and welcome to We Speak English Good TV. I'm your announcer, Jean-Claude Van Damme. There you go. Yeah. That was for you. That was for you, Amelia. They you play Wonder Woman. You play Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. Uh, That'll be $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but that that aspect of, uh, you know, like being a woman as a performer and, and having – just creepy dudes coming up to you. It's like I, I play with my wife. Well, we used to when there was gigs. Uh, but mm -hmm. I play with my wife, and they're just like coming up to her, like trying to touch her, trying to touch her hair and shit. It's just like, it's just like, I I, I do I feel for the female uh, performers out there who are working in the bar scene, who who are subjected to people who think they that they're drunk, you know, they're or whatever they're they are. And they just feel like since you're a performer, they have some sort of ownership over you and they can just come up and demand things and touch you and grab the mic and touch your guitar or play the drums or whatever it is. Yeah. I don't I don't miss that. I don't miss that. Um, do you plan on going back out into uh, IRL and doing it like that? Y yes, but. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, but. <laughs> I, I like uh, it's uh, like I've got uh, I'm playing a farmer's market uh in um or, um mid-june and i'm also playing another market in july and nice. once in august um but then after that it's just going to be <laughs> live streaming yeah. in fact in fact it's probably just going to be live streaming for most of the music stuff that i do and then you know sparingly i would play a market every month Mm. Um, but, uh, and, and I talked to them about, it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do a market for sure. Um, but not too many just, yeah. just because of obvious reasons, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, reasons. yeah, obvious reasons, but, um, but, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing a few things, um, during the summer. Oh, that's but, cool. Uh, no, mostly I... live streaming stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, that's where my head's at right now. But but I also do want to, but because I'm a more of a background guy, I, I play keys or guitar, so like I can sort of fit in in a lot of different capacities. So I don't mind just playing a gig because most of the time when people are getting harassed, it's it's mu it's usually the person singing right or or the lead yeah. guitar player. So I'm not that, and so most of the time I'm pretty I'm pretty left alone. But you know. You, you drop a hot solo on somebody and it's hitting those frequencies with someone and all of a sudden they're like trying to be your best friend and come home with you. It's like, no, nah, man, I already got a dog and a kid and shit. It's all good. You yeah. stay here. You're here. You stay. Stay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Come, come back next. Come yeah. back next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you'll be like, follow my, um, check out my, my Instagram or check out my Twitter. And then you can start focusing on that social media clout. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Takes note. Go to live gig and troll. Exactly. Um, that's right, Ziggy. Come over. Come to my live gig, and come troll me. And, wow, um, Ziggy. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm actually very polite about it. I'm not mean about it, but I, I will tell somebody if they're like too drunk or too close. I will turn instantly into a into the biggest asshole. <laughs> but um, I mean, you yeah. know. Dude, it, it, you got beer coming this close to my five thousand dollar keyboard. You're gonna believe you're gonna get a mouthful. <laughs> it's like get away from me. Um, yeah. But but again, I do miss those aspects too. Like I also miss the aspect of of a whole group of people in one uh, room, yeah. feeding like feeding the band and the band feeding them. Everyone's dancing. Everyone is is on the same wavelength and everyone is connecting. Like that is what I miss a lot. So. I, I I will probably partake in some of it because I gotta get something. I mean, yeah, uh, like yeah. it's really fun playing on Twitch. Like like we did our live band stream yesterday, and I mean it's really fun. And for the guys I'm playing with, they're pretty new to this whole Twitch thing, and they're coming mm -hmm. from a live performance background, and and they fucking love it, man. And and you know you I'm sure you've played those gigs where you get done playing a song and there's no claps, nobody says anything and they're just like talking to their friends or watching the game and it's just 
dead silent. You just put your heart into this song and, and you know, like you almost shed a tear because you're feeling it so, so hard. And so you're emotionally just taxing yourself just to a deafening, silent crowd, you know, like it's just, yeah. you're pouring your energy into the ether and, and, and that sucks too. Uh, but you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's not that like, I, I guess I was equating that to Twitch, but it's not <gasps> that it's it, because there is the chat, right? You have emotes right. and you have people saying, Hey, that was awesome. And all that. But for people who aren't used to it, you know, like after you play a song, after you like, especially if you just ripped it or whatever, and there's just nothing afterwards. There's nothing. It's weird. It's a little weird. But, yeah. but like when you're on line like this, it's like there's just a whole different. It's just a whole different thing, kind yeah. of. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's interesting because like um, I um, I think I had asked um, there's a relatively new musician on here. Her name's Hannah Rebecca, hmm. and um. She, I was. I think I might have been talking to her. I, I might mental. have been talking to. <laughs> I might have been talking to her about this. But basically, I was. No, no, no. Actually, it was with a friend of mine, Rockstar Angel, um, and and uh, she. I was. At, I was talking to her about uh, how curious I am about musicians who had been on platforms like Twitch or Periscope or whatever, um, and you know, playing music on there for a while versus um IRL musicians mm -hmm. who are just getting into the live streaming game yeah. and what how they approach it because i mean you know if you look at like like a you know like you were talking about your the live band that you were part of yesterday um and you mentioned that they were brand new to playing music on live stream they probably had like their setup as if they were playing a gig at a bar <laughs> yeah. or at at a club or something, right? Yeah. Well, when you they know, first when we first started doing, yeah, they would show up with all their crap, and it's just like, yeah. Please finish what you're saying. Oh no, it's just um, and then you know, compared to maybe somebody who has been streaming on on like Twitch or whatever for a while, and you know they'll have like their guitar, they'll have their you know Yamaha mixer, <laughs> yeah. you know they'll have like a small interface personas or um what's one focus writer or something like that right and they'll just play into that and it's just a totally different experience you know and it also when it comes to chatting with people um on on uh, these live streaming platforms versus you know a live uh, uh, uh an irl musician who's jumping onto twitch and might find it a bit unorthodox or a bit uncanny mm -hmm. to play music to their wall <laughs> or yeah. to their computer, yeah. you know? Um, and I, I'm always curious about how different musicians approach that, whether they've been on a certain platform for a while or if they've been, um, you know, IRL musicians and they're just getting into live streaming because it's a totally different experience on both ends. Yeah. You know, like totally. would, would this musician who's been on Twitch for a while be able to immediately jump into the atmosphere of the IRL musician and or or and vice versa. Yeah. You know, it's so it's like that's stuff I'm always curious about. But um but yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> no, I me too, man. Like that that's a lot of I mean what we talk about here is because it's like it, it is two different worlds and and you know, if you're used to, you know, a crowd and you're used to that kind of interaction and and, and like you're not getting that from here. Like I you know, I at the beginning <laughs> of the pandemic I had a lot of friends who I was telling, you got to get on Twitch. You got to get on Twitch. Go get on Twitch. And they just were like, oh, I'm going to wait for the lot or I'm going to wait for the gigs to come back. And which, uh, you know, they have for them. A lot of them, who my friends, they have come back, but it's been a year and a half. So uh, yeah. in a year and a half, they've been just sitting still and not doing anything. And it's like, man, like it, there, there's this huge turn off with them because there is no immediate payoff right like if when yeah. you if you're a part of a, a hot band that's killing it and you can draw people and and at the end of each song people are like yes you know and 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 you come to twitch and all you see are people just flooding with emails like what is this like <laughs> you know i i get that it's not the same but like i also i don't also being an artist and a musician is about being uh, being able is about adaptation because sh the, the 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 shit is shifting constantly it's always shifting whether it's it's a pandemic that takes all your gigs or if it's uh or if if uh you know the the economy goes goes to the dumpster and like you know bars are shutting down or or you know like whatever the situation is your your landlord hiked up your rent 
you know, like any situation, like you have to be able to adapt with the times, with what you're doing. If you want to be an artist successfully and live off your art, because you're not going to do until you're until you're like really established, you're not going to your your sources of income are probably not going to come from one single place. And if it does start diversifying that shit because you don't know yeah. when that shit's going to dry up because yeah. it's, it's nuts. It's mm -hmm. bananas. It, it, I mean, even if you just start a threadless store and you just throw some simple design on a shirt and, and, you, and you add that link to whatever you're doing, you know, like anything, you just got to start like getting in multiple as rev, a multiple streams of revenue because this is this this job is 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 very quixotic by nature, and if you're not prepared, you're kind of screwed, <laughs> like yeah. a lot of people were at the beginning of this pandemic. Yeah, that oh, that was a <laughs> mess. That was a mess. That was a mess. Yeah, because I mean, you would see on all these different, uh, you know, music articles and things like bars are closing here, mm -hmm. bars are closing there, restaurants are closing here, venues are closing here. Is this one open? Nope. This one's actually closed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's, 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 uh, you look at all of that and it's like, that's not very motivational for me to keep doing what I'm normally doing. Right. So like you were saying, if I haven't started any multiple streams of revenue, then I, it's not, I'm, it's not going to be good. Mm -hmm. And then you can't, you, you know, at the time when it was, when the, when it was really when the pandemic was really um like in its i guess peak at the time which it probably still is but you know yeah. when it was really when people were starting to get more knowledge about it like you couldn't say okay if my music doesn't really work out then i'll just apply for a retail job <laughs> because there were retailers that were also closing too right you know and it's like they were trying to slowly pull back on you know their um employees and everything and it's like i uh, it, would it be would you be able to guarantee being able to get a retailer position or maybe even a fast food position mm -hmm. really um because of all of this so right. it's like um if you haven't done so now then just go ahead and start <laughs> diversifying right now um because uh, like you said <laughs> anything can, anything can happen you know yeah I mean? go ahead and start diversifying now no you exactly. know what you know what's interesting now is is that there's these around here there's there's these restaurants and retailers that are shutting down early simply because they don't have enough employees mm. so that's the mm. fun part about all this like unemployment thing is like everyone's realizing is like I don't want to do that. <laughs> if, I mean, if you've been sitting at home for over a year and a half, having all this time to think about, like, every day you would get up and do this thing that you hated. You know, like, how many people get up every day and go to a place that they hate and do something they can't stand and talk yeah. to people they don't ever want to be associated with? How many people do that? And how many people, oh. oh, it's really hard. So when you have all this time to think, I feel like, uh, and you're getting sort of paid for it, people are starting to realize it's like, hey, I think my time should be worth more and I maybe I should be getting paid more for what I do or, or at least find something better to do. You know, like, I don't know. Like, it's yeah. just, this whole pandemic just sort of reshaped how a lot of people just go about their life, you know? And yeah. it's, you know, it, it now, now I'm seeing restaurants offering $17 an hour for start. And it's like no experience necessary. Just get in here and work, please. Yeah, that was please. crazy. That it's was nuts. crazy. I heard about I heard about stuff like that too. It's but nuts, man. It's not they're uh they're like, we gotta put all our cards on the table and then some. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And and maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. I mean, like if these businesses want to stay in in uh, uh yeah, you're moving to Ohio. Yeah, please don't, Amelia. Not that I wouldn't <laughs> love to have you walking around the streets of Oregon. Uh, but just for the simple fact that you're just too cool for Oregon, Ohio. So please, <laughs> please be, please stay in Finland or, or, or even San Francisco is a better choice. <laughs> Go back to the Bay. It'd be cool there. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's. Maybe it's a good thing. You know, I hear a lot of people talk about how, like, you know, how they want to raise the minimum wage and how this is going to, like, crush small business. Well, I think not having workers is going to crush small business worse than paying a decent livable wage. And and when you see that when people are put up against the wall, you see how much they're willing to come off that, that dough 
when they're yeah. put up against the wall. And these are privately owned restaurants that are offering this kind of money. So it's like maybe, maybe there's something to it. I don't know. I'm not an economist. I just play one on Twitch. Um, <laughs> so we have some questions here from like 40 <laughs> minutes ago. Yeah, I saw it. Okay. Would you say Twitch is a lifestyle? Ziggy wants to know or else she's going to. She's going to like, she's going to just <laughs> burst. <laughs> um, I would, I, I would, I would say, I would say yes. Uh, you know, for me personally, like, um, I, I guess it's a lifestyle for me because there'll be moments where I have like three or more tabs open, you know, <laughs> of, of Twitch streams. Sometimes it'll be a mixture of different, like, like some game streams, sometimes most, mostly music streams. Um, and, uh, it's just, uh, I've, I've, I've met some really fantastic people on, on here and also on pretty much any live streaming platform that I've been using over the past five, six years, give or take. Um, it's just allowed me to really, uh, take the kind of person that I am and, um, you know, uh, fine tune, like, like level, level up, you know, um, because there are other people who were doing things that, I initially thought I wasn't able to do because um, of limitations like um, lack of, you know, self-worth and lack of courage yeah. and confidence in myself. You know what I mean? I do. And so um, when I saw all that on all these different live streams, I'm like, dude, uh, sign me up. I want to be a part of all of this. <laughs> um, and funny thing is I didn't realize how much it was going to change me until I really started doing it after a certain period of time. And uh, it, it 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 helped. So yeah, I met a lot of awesome people on here. I'm friends. I've made friends with some really awesome people because of live streaming. Um, I've been able to get some really cool opportunities because of live streaming. Um, it's uh, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's a it's a lifestyle for me, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a strange platform where you find yourself on it at three a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Let's and talking go. to your friends, <laughs> you know, <laughs> talking to friends, having, you know, having laughs at, dude, I, I mean, during the pandemic, I used to, I would just go to bed at like midnight and wake up at two and I'll just be awake and I'll just be like, okay, right, here I am. And, and, you know, I had Twitch. <laughs> so I'd be like up at like three in the morning communicating with the world, which is such a bad idea for me. Like for whatever reason, <laughs> if I'm like communicating before a certain time of the day, I'm not... I'm not communicating with like my 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 really critical thinking cap on. It's like <laughs> I'm still half asleep cap, so I'm just saying whatever. And, and <laughs> <laughs> it sucks because I I run my mouth too much, and that's the problem. So. It's those late night vibes, man. <laughs> what can you do? It's like I, I I'm I'm a night owl, so mm. I'm up like late late hours in the night, and there will be things like I'll be like watching videos on YouTube. I'll be scouring Amazon or Musician's Friend for more music gear that I know I can't buy, but I still want to look at it anyway. Um, and then also like playing games. Like I've I've been <laughs> I've been playing Valheim for like the the past month. Give or take a little more than a month, and it's just been nonstop. I, 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 I'd like to say that I'm addicted. A friend of mine got me into it, and I've just been hooked ever since. And so, as a as a night owl, professional night owl, I dedicate my time and effort to Valheim and possibly eating and sleeping. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> we'll see if we have time in between yeah. Valheim. Let, let me right. see if my schedule allows me to sleep and take care of myself. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, what what is Valheim anyways? Like is it So, it's like um oh, well, I'm probably going to get uh, it, it's like it's it's a open world kind of like RPG kind of thing. Mm. You can it, it's basically you you can uh do a number of things. You can build things, you can mm. explore all the different parts of the world. Um you can group up with people and you can uh do even more exploring. You, you, it, it's 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 I it's, my it's first like an open world. Book. Oh my <laughs> God, you know I'm I'm live right now, right? Yeah, my mom said I could go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody, Saucy has finished his first chapter book, and it was a zombie apocalypse book. What was it called? Woo! The Last Kids on the uh, on the World. Last world. Kids on Earth. Yeah. Saucy is seven. He just finished his first chapter book that he read and it's by not himself. Even summer. Yeah, and it's not even summer. It was a summer goal for him to read one chapter book. 
and, and uh, it's not even summer. It's only been oh. like a week, huh? Yeah. He leveled out. He leveled he up. Le- he definitely leveled out for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for interrupting us for that. I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, I appreciate it. Right. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy being. I didn't forget about your question, by the way. Enjoy being. I didn't. You can always do number things like one and two. Yes, one and two. What, do you remember what we were talking about, Kelvin, before we were in Long story short, if you're not <laughs> if you're not playing Valheim, it's an RPG, <laughs> go play it. Because it's 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 one thing for me to explain it, but it's another thing for you to just start just playing play it, it and really get into it. Well, I think um, I think just saying RPG and exploring worlds is a good descriptor because you know, people can kind of get an idea of what it is. I mean, because if it was like a first player shooter game, you know, like that's that's totally different. Anyways. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I although I found that I'm I haven't been playing a lot of like uh, I I would normally play a lot of like uh, first person shooters third person shooters like I was a, like a huge Halo Halo fan you mm-hmm. know um, I played a little bit of like Call of Duty here and there but not not a whole lot um, but I was mostly playing like Halo and other games that were influenced by it and then I started to transition to more like to more like puzzle games and then from puzzle games I went from that to like um more rpgs mm. um and um you know i've been i was also playing like detroit become human oh that game like, I, I freaking love that Detroit's game i haven't so played cool. it in forever but so i love it good. so much it's such a cool so game much. like what the heck how do you even compete like the walking dead for 360 is probably like pretty comparable i'd say to detroit mm-hmm. was but anyway. i've heard i've heard a lot of good things about it i haven't had a chance to play it but i have seen some cutscenes of like the different uh seasons on on youtube and mm. things and uh, it does look really, really cool. And you know the way the work they put into it, yeah, uh, was 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 really really solid. Voice acting, definitely for sure. Oh, you mean for Detroit or for for, for Detroit Become yeah. Human, and then also oh, for yeah. the Walking Dead games. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no doubt that the I love how. Um, will you be playing Valheim after this interview? No, Ziggy, I don't have time to be playing Valheim. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't have the time. I, I have to play Minecraft Dungeons, bro. I'm still on Dungeons, okay? Back up. <laughs> Ziggy's like, let me go ahead and give you another game to play. <laughs> it's like, my son's really into gaming, so it's a great way for us to bond. And, of course, I came up on video games, so it's, it's a great yeah. way for us to hang out and do our thing. By the That's way, cool. being saucy, you can see here, being saucy, have our own stream. It's a family-friendly gaming stream. So if you don't like my potty mouth, well... It doesn't exist there, so I just tell dad jokes and smell Saucy's <laughs> fucking farts. It's awful. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to get to these questions. Hey, me too. <laughs> yeah, and mental. And mental. Uh, okay, uh, we got some questions here from Enjoy uh, from the chat that I wanted to get to. And uh, the first one is from Enjoy Bean. Uh, enjoy Beans? No, Enjoy Bean. Uh, do you ever have a day where you don't want to play music? If so, how do you focus yourself enough to play on those days? Ooh, that's a good that's a good question. Um, Solid question. Actually, you know, there are days where it's like maybe I should pull back for a bit because either uh, maybe I might have done a bit too much playing or maybe I just um, like maybe I've worked myself too hard and I've just burnt myself out because I am a bit of a workaholic at times. Um, and, uh, I, you know, it'll get to a point where I end up doing too much. I end up like doing too much in one sitting that I'm like, I kind of don't want to play any music or maybe even just not even do a live stream really. Mm. <laughs> um, and then there are other times where like my time management isn't the best. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and sleep. Uh, I'll catch you guys later. You guys, you guys be well, stay safe, stay hydrated. Um, and so, um, yeah, but, but, but mostly it's like, um, when it gets to that point where I don't want to play any music, it usually comes from like, I'll end up like burning myself out or maybe just taking a day off to rest my voice. Um, because, uh, like that's, I, I, you don't realize how important that stuff is until like you really feel it in your in your throat and you're like okay maybe I should just stop yeah <laughs> maybe yeah, stop for sure. a second um so so yeah it's 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 stuff like that probably more so of like you know poor time management or just <laughs> trying to take care of myself so I don't end up burning out my vocals or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's important, man. No, like uh, the burning out your vocals thing, like it, just going too hard. 
is 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 another i mean you don't even have to have like you you could want to play music and not be able to play it just because your vocals needs to rest and it's yeah. just it's just a physical thing i heard uh this interview with uh what the heck is his last name adam something he's the lead singer of the counting crows and he was talking about how like he went from you know this band who was just playing you know local gigs to like this touring band and he had to like that the as a band they had to figure out how to work around his vocals and mm. he, he would notice you know like if he it took him years but but he would notice if he does two days on and then one day off he could do it but if he pushes it three days in a row then he'll suffer for it for the rest of the tour mm. so like knowing your instrument knowing your limitations are so huge uh especially when you're doing it so often i mean you know like someone like yourself who's always streaming and then you're going to start playing out and stuff so uh, uh another person who who i i uh who has a lot of good information on this too is matt suarez music because he yeah. is adam duritz thank you uh amelia uh yeah adam duritz <laughs> Like he's such an interesting dude. I, I didn't realize how interested I would be in because I, I I like the Counting Crows, but I'm not like the biggest fan of the Counting Crows. But mm-hmm. he's pretty cool, pretty cool interview. But yeah, this this um, knowing your instrument, and knowing your limitations, if you're doing it over and over, uh, you, you have to have that in perspective, or else you're gonna be out there, you know, shit in the bed out in front of people. <laughs> And, mm. uh, and that and that happens, and whatever. But uh, what do you – you were mentioning burnout. Like what does burnout look like for you, like if you've just pushed it to the max? Um, I guess starting – like like just for example, I would um, – you know, I, I would start recording. Like it, there are moments where I have some ideas mm-hmm. that just come out of nowhere. And so I take them from my loop station and then I put them into – my recording software, Cubase, or or maybe even Audacity if I can't pull Cubase up. And I'll just record that for a little while, and then I'll jump from that to recording uh, music for stuff I'm going to be working on, like music I might want to release in the future, mm-hmm. um, to, I guess, um, editing a video um, for, for Patreon, and um, uh, going back and <laughs> going back and probably redoing the video numerous times because <laughs> there's one small thing that I don't like. So I had to go back and change that, doing a live stream, jumping at, back into recording more music, whether or not I'm doing this um, for, uh, for someone that hired me. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, going back to edit more videos and I guess just not spacing all of it out well enough mm-hmm. is, what would, is, is what causes it for me. And, yeah. and, uh, and then I'm like, yeah, let me just, I'm, I'm just, my body's just like, yeah, go ahead and just take a break. I'll, 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 I'll help. Yeah. My body's like, I'll help. I'll help you take a break. I'll help you take a break. <laughs> I'm just going to shut down now. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can keep going, but I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and <laughs> slowly close your eyes. Slowly. So slowly. then, so then what do you, what do you notice about your behavior once you start getting overloaded and you start in the burnout? Like what, what, how do you personally react to it? And then how do you sort of get through that? I mean, besides um, your body just shutting down on you. Yeah, there are moments where I literally just go over to my bed and I'm like, I'm going to start working on this. I'm going I'm to start working on this. And then I'm just, mm, Oh, you I'm just cool. fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's tight. I wish that's how I burnt out. I wish all I did was just pass out. I just sit there and go, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. That's, that's me. That's my burnout. I know, but then like there are other times where I'll be working on a song or, or editing a video and like um i i notice that there's one thing that i don't like so i'm like damn it i gotta go back and do this again <laughs> and and then when i have to do this again uh i record the video but then i end up messing something else up mm-hmm. so i'm like i gotta fix this old mistake and the new one and it just i i end up doing like however many takes of the video yeah. maybe like 10 takes of it and i'm like dude i can't get what i want out of this video i'm done yeah I'm done. So I generally just either, you know, crash or step outside and get some fresh air before I come back. Um, Because like, there'll be moments where I'll just want to punch a hole in my computer. But I'm like, (laughs) if I do that, I won't be able to. It's just, it's not going to get any better. You know what I mean? The last time. Oh, no, I I feel you. I feel it because I want to put my dad. He has broken a computer because he he's mad at it. He'll just be like, mother, blah, 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 blah. 
don't punch your computer. No, the last <laughs> no, so the last outburst I had was because of of Streamlabs and and I had an outburst and I punched a box and then immediately started on medication. <laughs> Man, because because it's like you shouldn't. First of all, I'm a grown ass man. I shouldn't be punching boxes because I'm mad at a computer. Okay, I'm an adult. Uh, (laughs) Secondly, um, punching boxes, punching beds, just physical violence is not something that I want my son to see as a way to handle their emotions that they can't deal with. And then thirdly, it was just, it was, it was just, it was just time. It was time. So, so I was just like, fuck it. I'm going on psych meds. This is just, this is just too much. And you know what? They're really fucking helping. This is amazing. Like, I, it sucks yeah. because they're making me gain weight exponentially. But on the other hand. So is that why you have the muscle milk? He, that's know? why I have the muscle milk. <laughs> that's, that's, exactly why, that's why I try to stay, that's why I'm super, super swole. You know what I mean? trying to stay <laughs> swole. I just keep <laughs> swollen up. That's the problem. Exactly. That, that's the whole problem is I keep swollen. Uh, Ravi, what's up, buddy? Sometimes hardware needs a, some positive. Put- <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes like, some, it just needs encouragement. Uh, some physical encouragement. But OBS is just a head scratcher in general. You know, yeah. whether it's Streamlabs or if it's OBS Studio or something like that. It's like it's it's a head scratcher. You know, <laughs> it's 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 yeah. like, like why, why do you do this to me? Right. I have everything set up. It says my microphone. I'm seeing the green bar move <laughs> with my microphone. Why can't anybody hear me? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and like even today, it was like we we tested your camera. It was fine. And then boom. And, nope. Not anymore. <laughs> you thought. It's like, yeah. It's like, uh, hey, do you want to not show your video? I can help you. <laughs> I got you. I can help you with that. <laughs> Um, so, so I kind of just sort of wrap up the second half of this question. So Mm -hmm. how do you focus yourself enough to play on those days that you're feeling burned out or do you just not play? Do you just are like, you know what? I'm going to take the day off. Yeah. I think, um, with, with the things, with the gigs that I've been fortunate enough to do, um, a lot of it's been like busking and a lot of it's been like, um, yeah, actually a lot of it was busking. There were gigs that I had played with a buddy of mine, um, if, in dc and we would play gigs in dc virginia maryland and um you know uh, i would make sure that i was good to go for those days but for a lot of the other stuff i was doing like if i didn't feel like busking that day or if i didn't feel like you know playing a live stream that day then i mean hey i just like i'll I'll see you guys next time <laughs> i'll see you guys next That's time fair. um and and you know you know both uh, groups, people in those different aspects, they understood mm. um, because I was telling them about the stuff that I normally do, and and um, and uh, it's 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 and I also you know am on good terms with the people that I um, play around in those markets and things. Mm. They 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 knew me pretty well, um, and so, so they would understand had, and they yeah. would be able to accommodate. And yep. it's not like Calvin gets tired and so he blows off gigs all the time. It's yeah. It's, <laughs> Calvin had a bad day, so I'm not playing tonight. But <laughs> he's like, you can entertain your own guest bar. Yeah, I don't, I don't need you. Uh, no, it's the fact that you you work with people who who are understanding and and you you align yourself with the right people to to maintain your lifestyle. Yeah, and I think yeah, that's and... a that's a it's not a bad thing at all. That definitely comes in handy because I mean I uh, I've been wanting to do like full time I've been wanting to be a full time musician for a long time mm. and uh, I've you know we've tried to find many ways to make it work and um, I was hoping that it would make the uh, experience of like playing like playing busking and things I, I was hoping that it would make it easier for someone to understand what I'm what I'm really really doing so that if I say I have to dip out or if I have to you know just take a day off or whatever then they won't be like oh but aren't you just playing at a bar or whatever all you have to do is just sit in the corner yeah and and then play music and I'm like no there's there's a lot of other stuff that I'm doing too mm-hmm. and if I don't do any of those things then I I, I may not even have enough gas money to get here. Right. right. Um, so, um, so it's just, uh, yeah. I, I and I, again, I'm wor- I was working with some really understanding people, so that definitely made it much easier. Yeah. Um, to sure. to have them sympathize. 
Yeah, man. I mean, that's the thing. You build repertoires with people, and if you if you're a good if you're good at your job, and and like you show up on time, and you you're playing that downbeat is at the right time, and you have uh, you know you keep the crowd entertained. It's like you're gonna build relationships with these people, and they're gonna understand if you're having a bad day or if something happened. It's like yo. I can't make it. It's like either, oh, no, the bar doesn't have somebody in the corner being ignored tonight or, or you know, they have like 20 other people on the roster who they can just call and they'll just they'll drop whatever they're doing and run down there. So mm-hmm. it, it's just it's just how it goes. It's just how it goes sometimes. Yeah. Um, so we have another question here, and this is a, this is a, probably the deepest and most important question of this interview. So, um this is from Wild But Sober. Do you prefer waffles or pretzels? And now, please, don't just discard the pretzels as those little hard cracker things. We're talking about soft-baked, freshly out of the oven pretzels that you can dip in cheese and or ranch. I don't know. Cream cheese? That, that was actually what I was considering because, like, the, the first thing I imagine that would maybe... Like, I, I imagine somebody else would probably be like, oh, like the bag of, like, really small, yeah. super salted. Yeah, that, like, that's the, the unevenly mis- salted pretzels. <laughs> yes. No. The common no. misconception around here. Yeah. No. No. The, we're, we're talking about those giant, like you said, mm-hmm. soft, nice and warm, hot uh, pretzels um, mm-hmm. that I would normally dip in mustard. I, I, I think maybe that's just a, I don't know, maybe... But but uh, but yeah, I mean, I would you know, I I would probably, I would probably just go with pretzels because I mean, I haven't had waffles in a long time, mm. and um, I like it, the last time I had them. I mean, it was it was good, <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I wasn't like, oh man, I miss these so much. <laughs> I didn't get that kind of feel from it. Right now, now the last time I had a hot soft baked pretzel and I dipped it in mustard, I'm like, dude, dude. <laughs> I can't right now. <laughs> Calvin waffles, squares of syrupy goodness. Yeah, you're right. And there's that. The the there's that element too. The syrup. I mean, come on. Like and and but but you know pretzels. That's all I gotta say. Well, Raina's pretzel gang. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, Raina's pretzel gang. She she she's living that life. You know, I, 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 I'm going to stick with waffles, even though I'm not a fan of sugar. I mean, I love okay. sugar. Love sugar. The problem is sugar doesn't love me. <laughs> so, I can't. churro. Oh, my God. We had churros at uh, Disneyland. It was so good. Uh, okay. We got we got more questions here. And I don't even know if Penny's still here. I'm sorry, Penny, that took us 41 minutes to get to your question. Uh, do you see yourself still streaming once live? IR- oh, well, we, we kind of went over that. But we can kind of quickly go over that again. Uh, do you still see yourself streaming after IRL picks up, the gigs come back? Um, yeah, actually. In fact, it's probably, if I can, it's probably going to be mostly streaming. Yeah. Um, because, I, I, I mean... You know, bars, playing at bars and, and other restaurants are, 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 co- are cool. You know, you meet some cool people there and, you know, you have some cool experiences. Like maybe, for example, like the crowd singing along with you when you play music. That's yeah. always a fun time. But I don't really miss it. I'm not much of a bar person, really. Yeah, so I don't really, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not going to miss it too much if I can't get down there. Or playing at, like, you know, restaurants and things. Because I guess, I guess I'm more of like in... In, introvert extrovert combo mm. i think there might be a word for it right but probably that's, but that's kind of what i am so if 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 i have the ability to stay in my studio and make music and stuff like that then i will um but if i have to go out and chat with people then cool let's do that right but i would prefer being here because it's just i i get a chance to really maximize my music stuff music capabilities here and, um, you know, just kind of do the things I want to do without feeling like, oh, I got to play, um, you know, Piano Man or I got to play, you know, something like that to where right. people are like, oh, yeah, I- I'll listen to you now that I'm now that you're playing a song that literally everybody knows and possibly gets overplayed. <laughs> possibly. Um, <you> know? <laughs> um, so. So, yeah. Yeah. I would definitely be streaming even when, you know, gigs and stuff open up. They they've been opening up like recently slowly little by little but i'm just like yeah i'm I, I'm, I'm good here <laughs> yeah yeah we've been passing too we've been passing uh, wait, where are you where are you at anyway are you in maryland yeah yeah where are you yeah, at in exactly. maryland 
Um, it's it's in Frederick, actually. It's like Frederick. in like around the Annapolis? between. It's it's about maybe an hour or so away from um, uh, Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there were gigs I was playing in like uh, Damascus and mm -hmm. Clarksville and places like that. Okay. And then um, you know I I would play gigs around there, um, but uh, but yeah, it's 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 a nice nice chill spot where I'm at and I get to make my music and not have to worry about disturbing my neighbors. Although it was <laughs> different in the beginning when my brother and I first moved here. Um, it was different in the beginning, but it's definitely gotten much easier for me to make my tunes um, shine <laughs> now in this apartment that I live in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah. good. Now, I, we, I, 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 me and Raina have family in, uh, in Annapolis and uh, we go out there a few <sighs> times nice. a year. And nice. you know, we, we, we like that blue crab, that blue crab. Let me tell you. Uh, nice. I, yeah, I, I my, my, my brother, my brother and his girlfriend recently moved out there. Mm. And uh, I don't know if they've had uh, the opportunity to grab some of that, but mm. I have a feeling that they might at some point. It, it's actually um, not as cool as that. It's not as cool as people make it out to be. Only have you ever tried to tear one of those things apart? It's like it's kind of annoying. <laughs> like, I. Uh, <laughs> Yes, and you're right. It is. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, like, but if you're can like, if, somebody else do it. Well, like, like I can, you know, like I like to eat. When I eat, I like to like shovel it in. And so, like, when, when not that I eat like a like a like a troglodyte or anything, but I just I I, <laughs> I eat. But but like when I come to eat, I come to get down. You know what I mean? Like it's like I don't like Doesn't these go. little yeah. tiny little bites. You know, I'm not a rabbit. Like thankfully. When me and Raina were first dating, she wasn't one of those salad people. I was like, "Yo, let's ditch the let's ditch," because we were gonna all go to the sushi place, and all, yeah. my friends kept on pissing around, and I was like, I was like getting pissed off, and I was like, "Yo, do you want to just go get some barbecue?" And she's just like, yes. "Uh huh," because oh. <laughs> she hates sushi, which I didn't know until we got to the barbecue place, and and like so she was just like, "Thank God," and she just tore into her food. I have to eat, you know, like I, the way I eat. Yeah. Me and you know, so um, it, it's like when you when you have to sit there and and tear apart like shells and use a hammer and then use something to dig out the crab and then you get like a little sliver of crab this big. Yeah, and and it just melts on your tongue, and you it's just it, no, no. It, it it's good. It's delicious. The crab cakes are to die for. Crab cakes. But do I want to sit there and rip crabs apart to get like two little saliva sized pieces of food? Saliva size? <laughs> What's how big is saliva? I don't know. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's about this big. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think that's the that's an accurate measurement there. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Screw your blue crab, uh, Baltimore or Maryland. <laughs> that message is that message is going out to the ether, and they're yeah. like, "Wait a minute, I can, some, did somebody <laughs> some, did somebody just say screw us? Like, how dare they? Yeah. But also, maybe we should get them over here. <laughs> maybe, maybe they should relocate." <laughs> Maryland's a, Maryland is such a weird state in the fact that it's like super beautiful and and it's also like somewhere in between like southern and northern and people still talk kind of with a twang and you yeah. know what I mean like it's just yeah. this it's a it's a weird place that that's sort of I don't know I, I love it I I love going there and seeing people and going to the ocean it's fun but. Yeah, Maryland is. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Maryland is a is a, a a beautiful state. You know, you'll you'll have a mixture of like dirt roads here and there, mm -hmm. and then you'll have mountains, and then you'll have a lot of uh, shrubbery and all that. And then when it comes to the weather, it's like you get everything here. Yeah. You get rain, you get snow. Although we haven't had much of that recently, a few in there. Rain, hurricanes, you get snow, hurricanes. You get like <laughs> super hot weather. It's like Maryland. I get it. You're you don't like the people that live here, but please have mercy on us, please. Yeah, the weather does. That. It's just like whatever. It's just I feel like the whole like uh, like Midwest to like the Northeast until you get down to maybe Georgia ish. You know, it's yeah. just the weather is garbage. It's just like rain and, and snow and just. It just sucks over here. Like it's such a surprise that people want to live over here, but uh, you know whatever. I mean, especially coming from like you. You said you moved from Miami. Your family moved yeah. from Miami. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
from did, like um like um Fort Lauderdale, mm-hmm. Miami in that area. And uh we were there for a little while and then we moved from there to um to DC and Fort Washington and then uh, from there we moved to, to Maryland. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at one point at one point we were in Georgia. We were in Atlanta for about a year. Oh sweet. Um and uh it was an interesting experience to say the least. What well, um, why was it interesting? <laughs> well, because where we ended up, um where we ended up it was a lot of like there were a lot of like you know country folk around and you know they they didn't really they they didn't really like the way that we i guess carried ourselves too well you know what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah they mm-hmm. were like dude you sound weird it's like this is just me talking yeah. what the hell are you talking about this right. is just me talking right. um and um yeah it was it was it was kind of like it was a consistent thing mm-hmm. and you know and then we ended up moving back because like didn't really work out too well you know they were just kind of like yeah you're we, we don't really like you that much now it wasn't everybody but it was it was a, a good number of people well no i mean you know i don't want to i know you're trying to like you're trying to speak in a safe way but like is this is this coming from like like a, a race thing or is it just it is yeah. okay okay so yeah, I, yeah I, I i guess that's just the the way that i was that, like that's the way that I normally respond to stuff like that. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, basically, it was just like you know, I was my my family and I, we were just you know a, a new black family that moved mm-hmm. into this neighborhood, and then there were other black families that were around, and they were like, what, <laughs> what, 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 why are you talking like that? Why do you dress like that? Why? Mm-hmm. And then when when my brothers and I went to the schools down there, um, you know, uh, like we had to deal with <clears throat> we, we had to deal with you know these uh, black kids who i guess weren't open to n- like having a, uh, a, a a black kid show up um that didn't match the way that they dressed or the way that they spoke mm-hmm. and instead of asking questions like you know like normally what a kid would do is instead of asking questions they'll just assume things yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh and um, that's that's pretty much what they did. Now, granted, there were there were kids who I got got along well with, mm. um, and they were just open to hanging out with anybody. But um, there were a large percentage of black kids down there who just, um, you know, weren't open to that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was just uh, it was it was uncomfortable. Now, granted, I had three brothers to go back to and hang out with, so mm. I mean, it didn't really like impact me to the point where I had to change myself Mm -hmm. to fit into that group right um if anything i was hoping that they'd be able to understand me (laughs) that they could respect me a little more and then i could maybe respect the way that they do things and we can come to like a mutual understanding of how we do how we do things but um didn't always work out that way you know you know kids would just kind of say you know whatever they want to say and then i just have to brush it off um and uh you know it was just the atmosphere down there wasn't very good especially for like my younger brother he got got the brunt of it you know they they were bullying him and stuff like that and he just really couldn't take it all but uh at the end of the day you know we made sure that we were always around to make sure he had some company Mm -hmm. so that when he had to speak his mind it wasn't like it was being ignored right you know um because that's what it seemed like with kids that were down there yeah, so, man. It was, it, it was a bit of a mess. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm sorry you had to deal with that in your lifetime, man. It's a I mean, these are the things that make us stronger, though, because it didn't destroy you. You are, you know, you're here, and it, if anything, it solidified who you are, and it made you m- m- want to be yourself more. Um, my, my, yeah. I, I'm not trying to laugh at anything, but but my wife. She gets she gets called by her own family, her own brothers and sisters. They they call her whitewashed all the time. And if anybody doesn't know, my wife is black, and and so, uh, but but she she gets called whitewashed just because of the way she talks and and you know her brothers and sisters came up in a different environment than she did because she went to a performing arts school, mm-hmm. and then her brothers and sisters went to like a local neighborhood school where they lived, and yeah. so it, they you know you where you come up and how you're influenced and and how you know how you speak is all part of you know how what you learned while growing up and yeah. she learned to adapt in different situations the way she did 
And then her brothers and sisters mercilessly uh, ripped her a new asshole for it. Which, you know, now she can look back and laugh, but at the time she was just like, dang, you know, I'm just trying to be me. Yeah. And it's like, hi. And, and that's 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 her own family. And so, you know, I, I obviously I don't know. I don't have a dog in this fight, but it's like, you know, seeing that I'm half Mexican and, and I've, I've had the situation where, you know, like where you're not Mexican enough type thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. and that's kind of like kind of that, but it's never been on that level where I'm being harassed for it. But, but, but I have had that, you know, where it's just like, <laughs> It's just like some straight up vatos are just like, uh-uh, <laughs> piche <laughs> huero, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you can just keep going. Uh, but uh, anyways, it's, it's, you know, but these are the things that build us up and make us stronger. It's, it didn't destroy us. You know, we can, yeah. we, it, it's painful, but it didn't destroy us. And now we're us. Uh, we got another question here from the, from the chat. I just picked up, uh, oh, I, I saw that moving Dutchman and hi, welcome in. Um, we'll get to your, we're going to get to the interview with baby Yoda. We got a baby Yoda interview coming up guys. So stay tuned, but I want to get through these questions and then we'll get to the baby Yoda interview. So give us a second baby Yoda. We'll get to you in just a moment. Um, just let's get through these questions and then we'll, we'll, we'll take it to the next level. Next level. <laughs> um, okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I just picked up the piano to try and learn music more formally. Any tips for someone just getting started with their first instrument? And this is from Papa Sweet. Big Papa. <laughs> I would I would say, um, you know, uh, be patient. <laughs> you know because um, really i mean th there's there's that's just one of many things but definitely be patient because it's it's actually really awesome that you started with piano first because piano was probably the best instrument that you can use to learn music theory and with that music theory you can carry that to other, any other instrument guitar you know uh you know violin whatever you can carry it to another instrument because all of the keys are on um, your piano and therefore all of the scales, chords, modes, um, you know, all, all that stuff. It's, it's all there. So you picked a really good instrument to start off with. Um, but at the same time, piano uh, has that hand eye coordination thing that you got to be aware of. Uh, and that takes a lot of practice. Um, so yeah, definitely patience is key. Um, consistency as well. You know, um, it, it helps to have like you know, some songs in the back of your mind that you like listening to that you wouldn't mind playing. Um, artists that you definitely wouldn't mind, um, you know, covering songs from. Bands that maybe you might want to um, play songs from one day. It helps to have that kind of motivation because it'll give you a, a framework to, to um, it'll, it'll give you a path to follow. You know, like you'll start playing piano and then it's kind of like you're walking down a, a dirt road and slowly but surely the pavement starts to 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 fill in and, and, and take that place of the dirt. And then eventually you get to that spot where you're in this nice area and the road is completely finished. And that's the song that you had in the back of your head and you being able to play it uh, and play it well. So um, having stuff like that to motivate you, at least in, in my eyes, it, it helps. Um, with um, learning the instrument and just making it an extension of yourself, I guess. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's solid. That I, yeah. I think that's super solid advice. There you go. From from the man himself. Uh, all right. Uh, Ziggy in Korea wants to know, what are some highlights from Twitch? Hmm. Very um, open-ended question. There was, <laughs> there was one time I, uh, I was playing music and um i somebody somebody had ordered some food for me through um treat stream which Ooh. is freaking amazing that's all i gotta say didn't even know treat stream was a thing i'm right oh, 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 oh dude you okay now that you know about treat stream <laughs> just like have a little widget of it on on your page or whatever or just just it, it it's, it's it's a really cool way for your chat to um get to know you better based off of the food you like. <laughs> so, you I know. agree. I agree. And um 
yeah, just my 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 chat. They they got me these. Um, they're basically like calzones from. They're like Papa John's yes. calzones, pretty much. Um, so I was I, I went and got got some of those, and I had to I stepped out of my room for a bit, and and then at the same time there was uh, a friend of mine who made a donation in my uh in my um stream and when i got back i just started playing some tunes or whatever and then later on i had noticed that somebody made a donation but the whole stream didn't say anything about it um <laughs> they were just playing along because he said um, i'm gonna do that i'm gonna make a donation here i'm gonna finish the donation bar yeah. um but don't tell anybody about it or don't 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 tell him about it just kind of you know go about your day and i just went back and i started playing music or whatever and then i was like wait when did this donation bar get filled? <laughs> and and then they were like 20 minutes. I'm like, 20 minutes? I didn't notice this for 20 minutes. What the heck was I on? <laughs> and so it's like <laughs> it just kind of happened right yeah. under my nose. And then when I got back, I was just like, let's just get back into the music. But I didn't know the bar was already done. I'm like, you guys didn't say anything. And then they're like, it was all part of the plan. All part of the plan. It was plan. All part of the plan. <laughs> It was it was uh definitely it was a really awesome experience. And then yeah, there was yeah, that's just <laughs> that was that was probably one of the 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 main things that I remember happening. Was it a just... was it a good calzone? Did you enjoy it? Oh yeah, it was it was awesome. It was like um it was like a Philly steak and <sighs> onion and green pepper um calzone in there. And then it also had like cheese and some pepperoni in there as well. Ooh. Um it was a nice nice blend. Ooh, you're making me nice blend. You're making me hungry. Let's go. <laughs> maybe that's why I, maybe that's why I'm I'm on the podcast today. Maybe I'm just on there to just to get my know. hunger going. I just, exactly. I, I yeah. I mean, I've got this You got pizza. pizza. I've got this pizza blanket in the background, so it's I mean, subliminally I getting to me cuz it's like you know what's you know what's sad in my older years of being alive, uh, which hold on I gotta I gotta lull what Amelia said, uh, the, is that now I, I I if I eat pizza if I eat if I eat cheese if I have any heavy cream, uh, my stomach decided to eat itself. So if I do that. If I eat pizza now, it uh, it's just painful and it's just horrible because I love cheese, I love dairy, I love pizza and calzones and all yeah. the things you just said are just amazing. But you know, I'm getting older. I, I've uh, I've done a lot of abuse to my body, and uh, <laughs> this is this is what happens when you abuse your body for your entire life. Oh, boy. <laughs> are, are you a producer? Wild but sober wants to know. Um, yes, yeah, I am because I um I self produced my own. Uh, album and my and my EP that you know followed like a couple of months afterwards. Um, I also helped a friend of mine, uh, Lizzie, who's also a mod for my channel, and uh, she released an album that I, I helped produce and, and mix. Um, and then we ended up running it through Lander, which is a mastering website. Yeah, and um, it's not bad. And uh, they took care of all of that. But um, did, did but you yeah, find, did really you find cool. that Lander? You had to do adjustments on the low end to sort of make up because I feel like Lander masters heavy on the low end because I feel like it's directed more towards like EDM and electronic. Uh, did you, did you find that you had troubles with getting a good master on Lander? Um, there were a couple of times where I had to like listen to the previews and stuff, and I'm like, mm -hmm. let me go back and fix the mix, mm -hmm. um, because I didn't want it to be too like low end heavy. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a solid blend, um, probably more so like a lot of mids and the like, range in between like lows and mids and stuff like that, yeah. but you know nothing too crazy. Um, but um, recently, I wish they'd had this before, but they recently added a feature where you can have a reference track, oh. and if you have a reference track that's been like mastered um by um a, like a bigger studio with a lot more gear mm -hmm. then you can use that reference track and it'll model the, the your preview and also your master after that reference track it'll model after that reference track wow. um so i released a song in 2016 called a better day and i had that mastered by um a um a, a mastering engineer named joe benny who was a friend of um a, a guitarist friend of mine from the music store I used to work at. Mm. And um, he uh, he mastered that song for me and it sounded fantastic. And then later on, like five years down the line, um, I noticed that Lander had this reference track feature. So I'm like, 
I have a song that was mastered by like a super professional dude. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it'll really boost my masters. And lo and behold, it did. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's 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 a really cool feature that Lander added. And I'm like, dude, this is really going to come in handy. You yeah. know? Yeah. There's yeah. a stark stark difference between that reference track feature and you know what they you know, currently what they had before. Yeah. They added it, and it's like. Man, this is this is crazy. Wow, I I haven't used Lander in probably like four years, and maybe a little bit sooner than that. But no, I mean, like they didn't have that 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 uh, option. That's amazing, and, and so like it, it leads you to believe that you can model like you just pick your favorite uh, engineer, mastering engineer, and and like that song that they did. And try to, and it should probably be somewhat like the song that you're making, uh, but yeah. you know whatever, and just sort of take the 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 like the the master's master and 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 apply it to yours. That, that's yeah, I love that. That's amazing. I love technology. So it's basically like an online version of Ozone, just more stripped down. Uh, yeah, but Ozone is is more hands on. Like Lander is more hands off. You just sort of mm -hmm. upload your track. And then now you can have a reference track and then you can, uh, um, yeah, it's more hands off. Like SoundCloud also also offers a mastering thing, which is pretty I, dope. Go ahead. I noticed that too. Yeah. Oh, I, I was just saying, I noticed that too. Mm -hmm. Like that was pretty recently that I found out about yeah. that. I'm like, SoundCloud mm -hmm. offers that? That's awesome. I, <laughs> I mastered a couple songs off of that thing and sold them. So <laughs> it's like, here you go. And then you gave them away. Dude. Like it, it was great. It was great. Ozone, I love Ozone. Like that's. That was my mastering software that I would use um, from Isotope, right? Um, that's mm -hmm. the mastering software I used before I moved to Ohio and lost my mm -hmm. entire studio. But, um, oh. yeah, but anyways. No, that's just because we moved, and it wasn't my computer. It's all good. It's not. Oh, okay. It's not like it was a horrible <laughs> I, I, situation. I thought, like, it had been, like... You know, like all the gear had been damaged or something because of like bad weather or something like that. No, you know? no, it was just me leaving. I heard a ship land. Is Baby Yoda here? <laughs> <laughs> you guys really want the baby? Okay, we'll do the Baby Yoda because I, Baby Yoda is just blowing me up. So let's let's do the Baby Baby Yoda. Are you, I'm summoning Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda, are you there? Baby Yoda, it is time for you. And even though it wasn't your turn yet, <laughs> we we're just gonna we're gonna do it anyways. Cause Baby Yoda is blowing me up here. All right, uh, all right. We'll see if Baby Yoda's. Uh, we'll see if he. Hold on, give me a second. Here. Moment of truth, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> are are you ready? Baby Yoda, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. good. There he is, everybody. There's Baby Yoda. Everyone There's the child. The child. <laughs> Grogu, how are you, my friend? How are you doing today, Grogu? Baby Yoda, are you there? Yes. How are you doing today? Pretty good. <laughs> good. I'm glad. I just got some money. Um, I got most buddy in the world. You got the most money in the world? I got the most buzzy lip lip balm. Oh you got <laughs> you got buzzy lip balm. Oh the lip balm makes your lips go buzz, huh? Is it yeah. has lots of yeah. menthol in it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I did a little I, I landed my ship today. Oh you landed your ship today. That's good. Okay. Do you have a question okay. for Kelvin Thomas? Oh yes, I do. Oh good. What what's your question, uh, Baby Yoda? Go ahead. What do you, what do you do, for streaming? <laughs> well, I I I play my original songs. Um, I play cover songs from artists I really like, and then I also use my loop station to you know, like loop stuff over and over, so I can add more stuff to it. And make, you know, just just have a really awesome time, really. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just music, music, and and a lot more music. <laughs> there you go. He, Calvin plays music on his stream. There you go, Baby Yoda. Uh, 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 do Do you have another question for Calvin? 
How much money do you make each time? <laughs> <laughs> Baby Yoda, let me just tell you something, Baby Yoda. That's kind of an inappropriate question. So can you think of something uh, a little bit more appropriate for the situation? I was gonna say Dogecoin, okay. but <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I have I haven't gotten any any you know, Bitcoin yet or any Dogecoin, but uh, I I'm still trying to learn more about crypto and all that. How stuff. old are you? Oh, that's a good question. How old are well, you? Well, I I actually I, I hit thirty in January. Hey, congratulations! Hey. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> that was wild. <laughs> um, great, great. Uh, okay, yeah. and Kelvin, did you have a question for Baby Yoda at all? Um. I guess my question to you, Baby Yoda, is, is the Force strong with you? Uh, Baby Yoda, is the Force strong with you? Yeah. Okay, there it is. Yes, it is. It's That's strong. all I need to know. It's strong with the Grogu. <laughs> Baby Yoda, thank you so much for your time and, and calling in and, and, and being here and, and beaming in. I'm sorry, beaming in here. Appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, you have a great rest of your day, okay? Okay. You have a great day, too. Thank you, sir. I'll see you later. See you later. All right. Baby Yoda, everybody. Give him a round of applause. Yay. There he goes. All right. Cutting the line. Cutting the line, Baby Yoda is. All right. You've got a pretty awesome segment there. <laughs> a pretty awesome segment, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know <laughs> I, can see, I can see why people like it so much. B the, they love the Baby Yoda. I just did. We added a new one, by the way, everyone. We added a Baby Grogu interviews. Oh, not Grogu. Baby Groot interview. So, um, oh. If you're, it, Baby Groot is, uh, is also on board as well. So, um, you know, save up those points. Uh, this Is this your friend, Rock Strangle? Yeah. Oh. Um. Oh. Well, Rocks. Rockstar Angel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Rockstar um, Angel. Rockstar Angel. That's yeah. She. Uh, yeah. She. Uh, she. Um. Joined Rockstar. Twitch. Uh. A while back. A couple months ago. And. Um. She's been tuning into my streams. And. Um. Yeah. And. And. Uh. Yeah. She. She. She's. She's cool people. Um. Joyce. She's. She's cool people. Um. Yeah. She. She plays guitar. She sings. Um. She's got a pretty cool studio setup too. And. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it's and she was the one of the musicians I was talking about, mm. um, the the music streamer divide, you know, but between music musicians who have been on Twitch or whatever, and know the routine versus IRL music streamers mm. who are just getting into it and are trying to find out how it all works. Yeah. I was talking to her about it, and uh, she gave me some pretty cool insight. So, um, yeah, like I I really respect the people who are like making this integrated effort you know doing like playing out and p streaming uh the nd brothers are doing it pretty well too they're oh dude, those killing, guys are amazing yeah they're they're killing it with with uh their live gigs and with their streaming uh rock strangle yeah i know i mean we we read english good too okay that doesn't hey stop at speaking english good we read english good too uh let's see here <laughs> i had to make i had to help my son make pizza a pizza after looking at your stream for an extended period of time yesterday is that that's not really a question Raina. <laughs> that's not a question that's a that's just a a, a a statement there so thank you for that i'm glad that that's from ziggy least favorite calzone type um Actually, that's a tough question because generally, I I I like I would say probably um, green peppers because sometimes green peppers works in a calzone, uh, you know, and then sometimes it's just kind of like you know extra weight; it doesn't need to be there. <laughs> onions, definitely. Yeah, I'm with you. Definitely, there. gotta have but, onions. But uh, green peppers, I, I guess it's a I don't know. Sometimes sometimes I like it. In a cow zone, sometimes I don't. It all it all depends on my mood, really. But um, I feel like onions, pepperoni work every time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you can't go wrong with that. Uh, the the pepper man. It, this this just it's class. The classic pepperoni pizza is just even that by itself is just you know it, it's perfect. It's just a perfect, perfect pie. It's just a perfect pie. You had onions and some black olives or something to it. Ooh. Ooh. Watch out! Watch out! Okay. Watch out. That's how Let's we do go. it. Um, Kelvin, I've been having some audio issues lately. I don't know. Have you been hearing something weird? There's this weird noise that keeps happening. I don't. Do you hear that? It's oh, like, shoot. 
Oh, oh shoot. I don't. Did, did, do you hear that? Do you know what that is? What is that? That does sound a little strange. That's weird. It just keeps happening. It's for the best. It just keeps happening randomly. And I don't know why. <laughs> do you know what it is? Yeah, it's from uh, Ocarina of Time. No, it's not, sir. It's time <laughs> for how much does it cost on Craigslist? We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with a game <laughs> to win some prizes. Stay tuned. We'll be R B and Kelvin. If you need to use the restroom, this is your time to shine, my friend. All right, guys, enjoy this while you wait. Fresh. So, I'm to get him where it hurt because he hurt me. Well, you got him where it hurt. Look at the nose. Look at the nose. That looks just alike. She only doing what he's supposed to be doing as a man. That's it. That's, That's it. Not That's it. That's not my baby. Really? That's not that my baby. Oh, how do you know? Look at me. Mari, she told me four months yeah. into the pregnancy the baby was mine. Yes, he's my son. He got to own up to the plate, Mari. In the case of the Twitch twin babies, the real father is. building an electro funk beat oh hold on let me do my hair let me do my hair that vintage shit conglomeration right there Okay, here we are, everybody. Uh, I had to do some little setup there because we're using a different thing. Oh, Mighty Mighty, thank you so much for gifting that sub to Mental. Let me get this in because uh, I saw it earlier, but I gotta do it. Mata Mata! There you go, Mighty. That was for you. Uh, okay, so the name of the game is how much does it cost on Craigslist? And it's a very simple game. Oh, I forgot to do the, no, oh, well, who cares? All right, so it, it, it's a very easy game. It's kind of like, oh my God, Mighty Mighty is gifting subs. And you know what? My alerts. All right, yeah, I'm turning the alerts back on. Sorry, so, Kelvin's over the alerts right now, everybody. Hey. We'll put, you know what? We'll put Kelvin right here. How about that? We'll cover up the stupid Facebook thing. I, I don't know why Facebook is still there. No one on Twitch cares for Facebook. I mean, you're <laughs> not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> All right. So the game is kind of like The Price is Right, except you can go over on price. You can bid. <gasps> And you know what I'm just realizing right now is that Amelia Music had won last time, and I totally forgot to send out her prize. So, uh, Amelia, I can't forget to send you your prize. Uh, okay, so the name of the game is uh, How Much Does It Cost on Craigslist? You bid, we're going to read and look at, a, at an item on Craigslist, and then we are going to guess on how much the item costs. Uh, again, it's like the price is right, but you can go over on, on price. If you uh, you only get one chance to bid, so the first thing you write, oh my god, the first thing you write 
Amaranth. Oh my god. <laughs> you just subbed Amaranth? She's gonna come over and do a hot tub stream with me. <laughs> That's tight. Thank you. Thank you for subbing this, Amaranth. The start of something beautiful. <laughs> this is the start of something real sexy, baby. Sexy Sunday just got sexier. Uh, all right. Um, anyways, so you only get one chance to bid. So if you're putting your bid in the chat, you only get one bid. No changes in the middle of things. And uh, that's it. That's that's the whole game. Very simple. I'll uh, let's get into it for our first item up for bid, which is these two buffalo nickels. And uh, the description is very simple and to the point. Uh, these are very expensive buffalo nickels. <laughs> <laughs> Just there you go. That's the description. And and by the way, I, I feel like I'm cheating a little. There you go. Just so you know that that's what it says. There it is. These are very expensive buffalo nickels. Calvin Thomas music. How much is this item cost on Craigslist? <sighs> Tempting. I want to aim high, but I also want to aim low because of that image resolution. <laughs> that is so crappy. That was on his <laughs> iPhone 1 right there. His first gen, <laughs> first gen iPhone right there. I'm like, dude, you... Probably could be better off with some more lighting. You know what I mean? <laughs> <sighs> Let's see. Let's see. Probably. He says very expensive. He said it. He said it. Maybe a hundred a pop. A hundred. So two hundred dollars total. Mm -hmm. Kelvin Thomas music says two hundred dollars. All right, guys. You know the game. Drop your bids in the chat. If oh, I didn't even show you guys what we're playing for. We, oh my god, I don't even have it in here. Ugh. Well, we have stickers and we have a patch. I have a patch somewhere. Golly. Well, you just pretend like you know what it is. It's a We Speak English Good patch, okay? So it's a We Speak English Good patch that looks like this little thing in the corner that I'm pointing at. That. So it's that and a Ric Flair Woo sticker. Uh, we, we got all kinds of things going on today. So go ahead, drop those bids in the chat. You got until the end of this. No, nope, not the end of that. Uh, you got until the end of, what is it? There we go. Drop those, drop, drop those bids. Drop those bids. Drop those bids. Drop, 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 drop. Is that it? For real? Just 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 four of you? Five of you? That's it? Okay. That's fine. That's, that's all right with me. I, I get it. You guys don't care for my prizes anymore. I I, I get it. You, you, you're it, over the Maybe they just don't want to bid too low because it's like <laughs> it says they're very expensive buffalo nickels. I but see. how expensive? You know? Or <laughs> they just, like... Who knows? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just it's too much. It's too much to ask of people right now. It's too much. It's like the the, the low resolution picture. It's old. It's supposed to be expensive. I get it. It's burnout. It's burnout. You know yeah, what? Exactly. Everyone, everyone, go to bed. Everyone after stream, go to bed. <laughs> just <laughs> go ahead and crash. <laughs> just go crash out. All right, let's go check out these bids and see what's going on on here. Enjoy being said. $50 for both of those buffalo nickels. Mental Wasabi says $150. $200 for Kelvin Thomas. Rafi says $85 USD. Thank you for clarifying, Rafi. I appreciate that. Penny says $300. And Reina Mystique says 172,457. Okay, perfect. Very specific. Very specific. People sell bikes without seats for $300. <laughs> you know what? Hey, you never know. You never know. It's whoever's closest. So just so you know, uh, it's whoever's closest. So it, 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 this, might, this might work out in your favor. You never know. Drum roll, please. Actual retail price on Craigslist twenty thousand dollars. Twenty grand. That's right, dude. That that image. 20. You definitely should have gotten some more light for that image, dude. Come on. You should have like maybe like glossed it up or something. <laughs> like what? We're not even trying. <laughs> we're not even trying. For 20 grand, they were they didn't even try. They didn't even try. And guess what? Guess what, Penny? Your $300 guess 
it, it won because it's the closest to it, to $20,000. <laughs> so Penny is our winner. Can't even afford a good camera. <laughs> That's why they're selling their nickels. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> never polish a coin. Is that right, Moving Dutchman? You should never polish a coin? Okay. I, I, I'll take your word for it. Penny. Good advice. You, uh, you can either whisper or you can jump in the Discord and uh, you can DM me your mailing address. 500 wins. Who who bid 500? 500. Who bid 500? You, Clear Door wasn't on Twitch. No. Oh, I see. That's why you... Moving Dutchman, why are you trying to get me all confused right now? Are, <laughs> are you doing this? Are you trying to hurt me? Why are you trying to hurt me, Moving Dutchman? My brain is very fragile. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we got one more up for bid. And again, uh, Penny, if you are... Wait a second, Moving Dutchman wins? Where's the $500? Where is it? I don't see it. Oh, where are those receipts? We have a dispute. We have a dispute over the winner, ladies and gentlemen. We have a dispute. Where is it? I need, I need to see it. $500 wins. I don't see your $500 moving Dutchman. I, I, I'm, I'm skeptical here. Oh, wait. I see. Yeah, I see it. My bad. My bad, moving Dutchman. I'm sorry, Penny. <laughs> there has been a mistake due to the judges. Uh, Aaron with the judges. Uh, there is a new mo new winner. I, I see it, moving Dutchman. I see it. I, I'm sorry. Uh, do you really want to hurt me? I apologize. <laughs> Do you really want to make me cry? Uh, I'm sorry, Penny, um, but you know what? Because of my silly mistake, Penny, still, if you're interested, I will send you some stickers. Moving Dutchman, you know the drill. You can either whisper me or you can uh, DM me in the Discord. And because I'm such a jerk, Penny, please do drop your, your, uh, your address and I will send you out something because that's rude. That's rude. M moderators! <laughs> <laughs> Mount up. Okay, we got one more, and then we're gonna cut our good friend Kelvin Thomas music. Uh, uh, we're gonna cut him, cut him, cut what? Cut him, cut him loose. That's what I meant. Cut him loose. All right. Hey, -ho. hey we're gonna cut him. Hey -ho. <laughs> cut Kelvin. I'm, I'm like, let me say one last few things, my family, before we <laughs> we go down that road. Right. I'm like, I'm sorry, I had that last slice. It's my fault. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Uh, okay, vintage Madonna mid-century print. All right, here we go. Vintage 80s mid-century Madonna screen print signed by artist Boyan Boynton. I don't know who that is. Overpainted on glass get, to give 3D look. Nice bright colors, thick, heavy, co uh, coved, coved aluminum frame. <laughs> I, I guess. I think that's right. Uh, and then uh, pieces this big are hard to come by, especially in original frame. So there mm. you go. We we got... Uh, th that does not look like Madonna. I'm sorry. That is, that is not a good representation of Madonna. Uh, I, I hate to be a judge of art, but I am very judgy sometimes. Um, oh, oh, oh. I was trying to zoom in, but who cares? <laughs> Anyways, there it is. Uh, Kelvin Thomas, how much does this item cost? On Craigslist. I'm going to go with five grand. Five grand. He's stepping it up a little. 5K for Kelvin Thomas. All right. Y'all know what time it is. You guys got until the end of this song, which I'll probably just extend it anyway. So here we go. Get it. Drop those bins. Drop those bins. Drop those bins. Drop 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 And he's done. Have a great day, y'all. All right. Enjoy being. I'll see you later. You guys can still drop your bids if you want. It's all good. I, I just like that song. All right. Enjoy being. You have a great day. Uh, sorry you didn't win. Hey, you want to drop a bid real quick before you leave? You can drop a bid. And if you get it, I'll message you and we can work it out later. Uh, if not, no worries. We are going to. Th this is it. We're doing it. All right, guys. Let's go through here. 5K for Kelvin. We got 19k for mental. We got two dollars for Dex, and then for Penny, we got another solid three hundred dollar bid. All right, let's get our drum roll on here. Let's go. Let's do it. Go. All right, there we go. Actual retail price on Craigslist. 
$3,500. Yay. <laughs> All right. There it is. Kelvin, I think you got it. I think that's hey. Kelvin. I think he yes. did it. There it is, Kelvin. You got you got uh, uh, you got a pro wrestler woo sticker, uh, and and you got some other stickers coming for you if you are interested. Uh, we'll, we'll link up afterwards, and uh, I'll shoot you an email. And uh, if you're interested, send your address, and I'll send you something out special. Yes. There it is. All right, guys. That was our games for today. Let's jump back over and give our proper goodbyes to our guest here. But I gotta do some rearranging, so. I'm going to put on the G stream screen and I'll still be here. I just, uh, I just, you know, want to get it right before we move it back. Okay, here we go. Boom. Oh yeah, that's right. That's perfect. Okay, there we are. All right. Nicely done. Thank you, Penny. I appreciate that. Kelvin Thomas, thank you so much for coming on the show. I had a wonderful time talking with you and, uh, you know, sharing sharing thoughts and exchanging ideas. Uh, how can people get a hold? Oh, my gosh. Mighty, mighty. Hey. You're just too generous. Thank you so much for that. I, I, I sincerely appreciate it. I'm going to get you one more, though. Mata, mata. There you go, Mighty. Um, how can people find you? How, and, and, of course, I'm going to drop the links in the chat. So please do go ahead and and and, and follow Thomas if you're not already. Uh, follow him up on his links and all, all his socials. And, I'll, and if you're listening to the audio of this, please do go into the show notes and click around and support your boy, Kelvin Thomas. When's the next time you're streaming? How can people get a hold of you? Yeah, so I uh, normally stream here on Twitch. Calvin Thomas Music, uh, Tuesdays, 12.30 p.m. Eastern, and then Thursdays and Saturdays, 3.30 p.m. Um, Eastern. And, uh, yeah, we play originals, covers, live looping, all that stuff. It's, it's good times. Um, I'm also uh, on Patreon, too. And um, I recently, re recently um, put some song ideas um, on there, um, and I release songs every month. I took a break from it, but we're going to get back into it soon. So, um, and these are songs that I like haven't played or or rarely play on my live streams. Oh, wow. So, if those are songs that you'd like to hear, then you can hop on over to Patreon, um, and you know you can pledge a certain amount. And if you aren't satisfied, then you can just you know cancel easily and you know and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, it's 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 good it's it's good times it's good times. So yeah, check that out whenever you get a chance. It's Calvin Thomas Music over there as well. Yeah. And then I'm I'm mostly on Twitter and Instagram. Calvin Thomas Music on Instagram and Calvin Thomas M U S on Twitter because somebody already has <laughs> Calvin Thomas Music on there. Sadly, but I you know. I, I think I found them as just some like scraggly white dude like hey. And that's <laughs> a funny a funny story about that. Sure. Real, real quick story about that. Um, so um, I uh, got uh, he he reached out to me. <laughs> he, re he reached out to me because my music and his music were in the same Calvin Thomas profile on Spotify. <sighs> and um, and uh, yeah, he was reaching out and he was like, yeah, so our both of our tunes are mixed in there. <laughs> and um, it's hard for us, our, our music to be separated, and differentiated. Yeah. So uh, he reached out to Spotify and I reached out to Spotify and they were able to get that situated. Oh, good. Um, but uh, I guess that was undone because he reached out to me again. <laughs> <laughs> again, the same thing happened. So we had to do that a second time. So oh, I, I maybe this might be a continuous thing. Maybe I might have to build a brotherly bond with him. Yeah, you know? I mean, you guys are friends know. for life now. It's maybe like, so. <laughs> just forever coinciding, releasing music and stuff. It's like, are you releasing this month? Okay, cool. I'll release now. I'll your turn to release. <laughs> And we'll just share the release dates. Calvin, I, it's been a blast. Thank you so much for being here. And um, I, I really do appreciate who we raiding. Who we raiding? I, I couldn't raid yesterday for whatever reason. It just wouldn't let me. So uh, we, we got to raid somebody, I, I, I suppose. So hold on. If, if uh, I might have to go on here and look. Let me see. Oh, that's nothing. Um, well, crud. Okay. <laughs> I gotta find stuff here. Back to Twitch. Sometimes I have to collapse my follow channels list mm. because I, I follow so many musicians. Right, right. I'm like, just, dude, uh... I, I should just go off the first musician that's on my head. And it's usually a whole bunch, so I never really 
I have to sometimes build a poll in my streams and then they, you know, it just goes from there. Ah. But it's like, <laughs> like there's a lot of people here. A lot of people. Okay. All right. I think I know who we're going to do. I think we're going to go over the fairy live show because fairy is, a uh, is, is, a uh, is pretty awesome. Uh, oh, wow. Look at that. Thank you, Raina, for doing all that stuff. I just saw that. So we're going to go over another great guest, totally different personality than all the rest. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Moving Dutchman. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all your love and support. Thank you, guys, everyone. It, it was awesome. Let me, uh, let's, let me get this right over so Calvin can live his life. Um, <laughs> let me see. Fairy live show. Uh, Fairy is going to probably be on the show sometime we're still working out dates so um let me make sure she's on yeah she's on we're going in all right we're going in everybody we're going in all right uh friday we have just goody uh, on so please do come through we are going to be having ourselves a good old time he's a reggae artist out of san diego california so please do come through and then of course monday we have our one year stream anniversary we're doing an eight hour stream we're marbles we got guests old friends and we have uh, a performance with me and uh, our wonderful mod, Brain with Steak on. So please do come through. I'll see you guys on Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Enjoy Fairy. She's amazing. Bye-bye. There we go. And then, hold on, just let me end, and then I'll, I'll cut you loose, bud. Yeah. <laughs>